Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Today we celebrate the Feast of Feasts. We celebrate the glorious Feast of the Resurrection. So today I want to speak to you about uh, resurrection. And as you've heard in the hymns today, we say, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs, bestowing life. Yes, the resurrection of Jesus Christ came for those, or gave life to those in the tombs, but the resurrection also gave life to those who were not in the tombs. And I'm worried that if we wait to experience resurrection till after we pass away, you've waited too long. You've waited too long. You have to experience the resurrection today. In other words, we're not waiting to experience resurrection after we pass from this world. We'll experience resurrection at that time, but we also have to res experience the resurrection now. We have to experience resurrection now. We experienced our first resurrection during our baptism. We had a baptism today, and many of the prayers speak about the resurrection in our baptism. And during baptism, we believe, as St. Paul teaches, he says, Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him, therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in the newness of life. Even so, we should walk in the newness of life. So our baptism is death and resurrection. And in our baptism, we take off our old nature, or to be more specific, we put to death our old nature. We put to death our old nature. Like what we say in the Tizbaha, in one of the hymns, we say, O sink to him who was crucified, buried, and resurrected, who trampled and abolished death, then we say, take off the old man and put on the new and superior one. Come closer to the greatness of his mercy. Praise him and exalt him above all. And I think this new nature that we have in baptism is very critical. It's very critical. And it's critical for salvation. Critical for salvation. If we want to be in heaven, we have to have that nature. We have to have that nature. The new nature is like the wedding garment that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke about in the parable of the wedding. You know, in that parable, our, our Lord says that a master was planning a wedding feast for his son, and he went out and he called everyone to come to the feast. He called everyone to come to the feast. And people came, and then in the middle of the feast, the king came in to see the guests, but he saw a man there who did not have on the wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come here, in here without the wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You can't enter the wedding. You can't enter the wedding without the wedding garment. And you can't enter heaven without a new nature. The old nature is incompatible with heaven. To explain this point, I want to give you a little analogy. For instance, if you think of like a polar bear. A polar bear was created to live in cold climates. And if you took a polar bear and you put him in a different environment, he wouldn't be able to survive. It's just like our resurrected body was made for heaven. It was made for heaven. Notice that when our Lord Jesus Christ spoke to Nicodemus, he said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot, he cannot, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh, that which is born of flesh, is flesh. That which is born of spirit, is spirit. There's a distinction. And St. Paul also, he makes that same distinction in the Pauline epistle of today. He says, all flesh is not the same. All flesh is not the same. But there is one kind of flesh for men and another flesh for animals. There's another of fish. There's another of birds. There are celestial bodies 
and there are terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Then he goes on to say, our bodies are sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. Our body is sown a natural body, but it is raised, it is resurrected, a spiritual body. So we have to take this new nature. This new nature is the new nature of resurrection. And we have to take care of it and we have to keep it free from spot or blemish. Just like I said, if you take the polar bear out of its environment, it won't survive because its nature is not compatible with warm weather. The same is true of the Christian. The same is true of the Christian. The Christian that is living the life of resurrection, he has a nature incompatible with the worldly. Incompatible. So, like for an example, if you put this Christian who has the resurrected nature and he's living the Christian life and you put him in an environment where he sees sin, how's he going to react? He can't take it because his nature can't stand it. It would be like taking the fish and putting it outside of water. Like if a Christian goes to a place and he sees bad things then the Christian feels uneasy. He should feel uneasy. Because his nature should tell him, you can't be in this place. What are you doing in this place? What are you doing seeing these things? It's not compatible for your nature. A true Christian cannot tolerate to listen to the unpleasant music that is so prevalent these days or to see the provocative TV that's so prevalent. These things stain the wedding garment. These things stain the wedding garment. We all have the wedding garment, but we, we don't wash the wedding garment, so we don't realize we're wearing the wedding garment. What happens is we keep the wedding garment, and then we go roll in the mud, and then it gets dirty. No, we have to wash the wedding garment. We wash the wedding garment through repentance and confession. Resurrection. Another type of resurrection. I pray that we all take care of our our garments, take care of our, that we wash them, that we take care of our nature, our Christian nature that is incompatible with this world. Incompatible. It's different. And glory be to God forever. Amen.